miles. Today you're going to learn. Oh, I haven't finished. Today you're going to learn about deposition, erosion, and features. Arid <laughs> as heavy hole. That was rubbish. I want to go. Are you going to do something? wind erosion that may occur <clears throat> in arid and semi-arid areas. These consist of deflation, corrosion and attrition. Uh, the amount of erosion that occurs in these environments depends on the strength and duration of the wind, the composition and structure of the rocks, <laughs> the vegetation cover which acts as a shield from erosion and moisture of soil content. Right. Deflation happens when strong winds transport huge amounts of material over vast distances and deposit them a long way from their place of origin. Say it louder, but... Deflation is the process where loose surface material is carried away from an area, uncovering its underlying rock structure. Within the Sahara, and particularly in Egypt, there are new... How can you hear me? There are numerous... Large deflation hollows, which are surface depressions, hundreds of square kilometres in extent by deflation. Depressions are found where, oh god, I don't know what that means, so I'm not going to read it. Under certain circumstances, <laughs> deflation is also responsible for the creation of stony surfaces. Uh, yes. Corrosion is when wind blown sand abrades rocks. <laughs> Corrosion? Corrosion? <laughs> Keep going! Oh, yeah. Corrosion is when wind-blown sand abrades rock surfaces. Corrosion happens when sand carried in the wind abrades rock surfaces, producing sculptured rocks and ventifacts. Don't know if that's how you say it. The sand acts as sandpaper on landforms, changing and shaping its structure. Landforms are most changed when there are strong winds and sandstorms strong winds and sandstorms as more sand is moved about, therefore contributing to more corrosion on landforms. The way in which sand grains collide with each other and in doing so become smaller is descri described as a change. No, no water in this arid environment. <laughs> Winds, attrition increases because the wind blows, the sand grains about, colliding with each other, but also other landforms changing their formation. Strong winds in non-Aeolian areas and the fringes of subtropical high pressure cells pick up sand from near rivers, lakes and sea, and can carry its huge distances into deserts where it is deposited. About 60% of the world's sandy, arid and semi-arid areas are covered by extensive sand seas or ergs, which contain a variety of different types of sand dunes. Major sand seas occur in North Africa, Asia and Australia. Dunes develop around obstacles such as rocks. Landscapes have outcrops of hard rocks stretching for kilometres. Zugan, which are unusual shaped rocks. Oh yes. Ah. Away. <laughs> Depressions yeah. can be found where material has been blown away, sometimes removing all sand, leaving boulders. Oh, step over your name. Wait. Leaving boulders and desert pavements. Might not be hurt. In these places, there may be more vulnerability to moisture and chemical owl weathering to further deflation of the land and hollowing. Today yeah. is largely occupied by ergs, which Daisy's just said, um, and remain a fixed feature of this shifting sand. It has been suggested that the sand is placed in these dunes, ripples, and sand hills by a decrease of wind speed around sparse vegetation. Why aren't you filming your hands? Which we do not see. No, which we do not see here today. Sparse vegetation. That's that is what we see. Okay, we see means sparse none. vegetation. <laughs> right. Um, Unless it doesn't, and then we do. Sparse means some. Doesn't dense. Oh, but well, there's some no. up there. Um, 
You just thrown me off, man. Uh, off. The sand is concentrated in low land basins like here, yeah. uh, which was previously concentrated uh, by water during. Oh, hold on, I'm doing the alluvial low... periods. Go on, that's the water concentration. Water concentration in alluvial periods. Low land basin. <laughs> Carry on. I'm, I'm learning loads. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. It's you. Yes. Oh god. Oh. Okay. You want it? Yeah, bud. Yeah. I'll just film the dunes. Parabolic dunes. <laughs> Parabolic dunes. With our creek pointed in the upwind direction. Ridges are known as transverse dunes. Perpendicular to the effective wind direction and form where fields of barshans meet. Longitudinal self dunes have ridges which run parallel with the effective wind direction. Do you think crescent shaped dunes have horn shapes pointing downwind? These are often called Martian dunes. Sand seas of complex origins combined with many different generations of different dune forms dominated by transverse pyramid-shaped sand depositions. Ta-da! Are you finished? No. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, that was dunes. That was dunes. <laughs> no, wait. No, I want to go. Now he wants to go to this bridge. So we're going to stop filming and start again when we're there. This stretch of water could be known as an oasis. An accumulation of water within a desert. A desert. Many animals and vegetation feed off this water as it is sparse in this location. Look, you can see the animals there at the oasis right now. You see them? No, they look fucking. Wind transports material in three ways Very small particles that carry in suspension And may remain aloft for long periods Sand sun particles move in a series of hops along the ground by sortation And is the main way sand is moved in the desert Heavier particles are rolled along the surface by surface creep. <laughs> Wind transports material in three ways. Very small particles are carried in suspension and may remain <laughs> aloft for long periods. Sand sun particles move in a series of hops along the ground by sortation. And is the main way sand is moved in the desert. Heavier particles are rolled along the surface by surface Geography is my life. Yes, it is. 